Let's go! Bitcoin is currently going down towards the $34,000 area, but is there more than what meets the eye right now? Well, I am going to show you some data, very important data, which tells us that this bull run is far from over. And right now, this is stuff we need to pay attention to because equally as important as the chart, even more important actually, is the on-chain charts which tells us what's going on in Bitcoin for real. What is actually happened on the chain. So we're going to talk about that. I will also bring you the latest when it comes to Bitcoin. What should we pay attention to right now? What are the next support levels? What are the next price targets? Well, I'm also going to show you something extremely interesting on Ethereum. So if you're holding Ethereum, you're definitely going to want to watch this video. And we got one of my favorite patterns playing out on Bitcoin right now, guys. So this could potentially make a significant push upwards. So yes, with that said, guys, welcome back, everybody. My name is Cristiano, bringing you three cryptocurrency videos every day across two different channels. So if you want to stay up to date on everything that's going on, make sure to subscribe right now with the bell on. It's extremely important you get the bell activated so that you get notified as soon as I release a new video. Because if you remember in my video yesterday, we rounded up the video by talking about Ethereum on the 15 minute chart. And there was something interesting going on there. I'm going to give you a follow up on that. But first off, let's dive straight into the five second chart here on Bitcoin. No, I'm just kidding, guys. This is actually the one hour chart. And I want to show you that we are still ranging. This is not going to come as a surprise. And before we talk about price here and some price targets, I want to show you that this is actually what needs to happen right now. And I can already say that a lot of the people who got in at the top here, they are already gone. They are already telling all their relatives how big of a scam Bitcoin is. And this is what we need to do because how do we push price higher? There's only one way. We need to get people to buy Bitcoin, hold Bitcoin and buy some more and believe in it. We cannot have people foaming in at the top, telling people that it's a scam and then selling at the bottom and not wanting to put in the time to actually understand Bitcoin. So that's what's happening right now, guys. We are shaking out those people who Bitcoin, in all honesty, is not intended for. I can absolutely understand that a lot of people, they're getting stressed, they foam in at the top and you know they see this dump and whatever. Even though on this channel, there's one thing I said, don't buy up here. And I said, buy down here. We are going to have that retracement. Still people didn't listen to me, but that's fine. This is markets guys. There's always for every dollar lost in this market by someone, there's another dollar gained by someone else. So just make sure you are the one in gains and not at a loss. So yes, we are ranging and I'm expecting this to continue. We need that time consolidation to shake out the weak hands, as I said, and until we take out this level and break through this level, I think that we are going to continue just ranging here. And uh, until we break this level, I'm not going to become overly bearish at, uh, as well. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to let Bitcoin do its thing. And this is what it takes. This is time. Patience is going to be very rewarding eventually. One of the most stressful things actually for new people entering crypto is this sideways action because when you're coming from something like this you're having excitement every other day you have these small dips but in general it's just going up and you feel on top of the world you have never experienced a you know significant dump and then you get this slapped into your face 30 percent just eat it and yesterday and then on top of that this long consolidation although we've been consolidating for just under two weeks actually so it has not even been that long still people are getting bored selling their bitcoin whatever now let's talk about some price targets right now on bitcoin we're actually forming one of my favorite patterns we're coming from a downtrend can you guess which pattern this is we're making a low here we're going up we're making a second low which is higher than the first one and what we want to see now in order for this w pattern to actually become a tradable pattern we want to see this come up here and break this neckline. This is on the hourly. You can see that we are currently actually going down here uh, on Bitcoin. So if this goes down and makes a lower low here, this is not going to be valid anymore. But let's say we just, you know, have some uh, support here. We come up again. Well, the target from this mini breakout on the hourly is actually 37,234. And this is absolutely tradable. If you actually get that breakout uh, from this level and close a, a candle, that's fine. 
Now, I'm actually going to talk about this in relation to Ethereum here in a bit, but the wedge which broke down again, just like I said yesterday, the target has been hit. So congratulations to everyone who traded this pattern. But what I really wanted to talk about is this massive triangle right here. So I've had it like this for a while. And if you have it like this, then in that case, you have gone up, you have retested this as resistance, you got rejected and you've gone down. Now, technically, this is extremely bearish. This is not what we want to see. But a couple of people actually pointed out yesterday that if you instead draw this, not from the uh, these wicks, but instead you draw it from the wicks uh, that have been formed here as well, you actually get something like this. In that case, you're having a touch point here, here, almost here, but definitely here, and this acted as perfect support. And in that case, we are still in this right now. So I guess what we have to wait for is to see if this candle is going to respect this level. In that case, I'm going to use this as the support line instead. But yeah, let us uh, wait and see. Perhaps uh, during the course of this video, I'll get back and see if this actually acted as support. But yes, this uh, on the top, is still intact, it's still like that. But yeah, the target from the breakdown, and yes, yes, we do not know yet. Let's see if this acts as support. But the previous breakdown target, 2000, well, 22,900. And if this is actually the case that we break down from this specific triangle, this is going to take us down to $22,000. But keep in mind, my make it or break it zone is still here at $30,000. And this is going to act as a very strong support. So do not expect us to just crash down here without any defense at all. So before we move into Ethereum, before we move into some on-chain data for Bitcoin, I want to remind you guys that if you want to trade over on Bybit, you can get $1,150 for free. Use the code jackpot in the rewards hub, sign up, it takes a couple of seconds, and then you are going to get these amounts if you deposit any of these amounts of Bitcoin. So make sure to uh, do that if you want to trade and also make sure to watch my trading tutorial popping up at the end of this video. So now let's quickly talk about Ethereum. So we did some, remember what we talked about yesterday, guys, we actually spotted a pattern on Ethereum in yesterday's video. And let me just remind you about the pattern we spotted on the 15 minute chart. One more time right here, higher low. This is actually, I mean, if you go to the 15 minutes, I think that this is most likely a W pattern. So let's go to the 15 minute, why not? Let's do this live. So coming from a downtrend, fantastic. Making a low, making a high, making a higher low, and then going up and breaking this. So, I mean, on the 15 minute guys, we're having a double, uh, a double bottom or a W pattern right here. This is textbook. And yes, we are breaking above this. So the target on the 15 minute chart, <laughs> this is what you get guys. Target is all the way up here at uh, 1,387. And yes, we came up, we hit the target exactly here. I've been getting so many messages from people saying that they took this trade. Congratulations to everyone who did that. Uh, but this is actually also what we got on, on Bitcoin, you know, the W pattern right here. But we're actually breaking down now below this level. So this is going to get invalidated if we continue down here. But let's make an update on what we talked about here. If this is going to act as support, this is going to be the perfect confirmation. If we are getting support here, we can assume that this is the triangle we should assume and work around. Uh, and if we just break down here, we should assume that the previous, previous triangle is actually the way to go. And in that case, things are looking uh, more bearish uh, than if this is the triangle. But what's the next levels on Ethereum to pay attention to? Well, you have this orange line right here. You need to pay attention to that one. Let's go back to the hourly, actually. Let me take away all of this clutter. Pay attention to this level. Pay attention to these levels, 1,213. And uh, the orange line is at 12,050. This is going to act as the first point of support here. So yes, if this comes down here, we are actually close to it right now. You can expect this to act as uh, support. And then you got some other support levels at 12,014. 11,162, 11,017, and then the big one down here at the brown box, 950. So yes, pay attention to that. We also actually are forming some kind of descending triangle here, guys. So yes, we are definitely forming a descending triangle of, of the 
This is this is actually pretty funny. Out of the resistance line of this previous triangle. So this is now the support for this descending triangle, and that's the resistance from the ascending triangle prior to this. Interesting. But here's what I want to talk about. This is also Ethereum to USD, and we got the Fibonacci levels we've been talking about. Just like with Bitcoin, these Fibonacci levels, they are important. You can see that we tried to break the Fibonacci level right here, the previous all-time high, we got rejected. And if you look on Bitcoin, when we tried to break its previous all-time high at $20,000, we also struggled. So we came up, we didn't reach it all the way we had a retracement. And on Ethereum, we came up, we didn't reach it all the way we had a retracement. We got above again and we eventually broke the all-time high here. But we didn't break it decisively here on Ethereum. We just tagged it pretty much on Bitcoin. We tagged it right here. And then we had another retracement, right? So another retracement. And then finally, the third time. So we were making kind of like this first low here and then a higher low right here. First low here, higher low here, sideways action going down. Are we going to have some sideways action going down here on Ethereum as well? And then eventually when we come up again, that is when we decisively broke it to the upside. So if things plays out, I mean, this is looking pretty similar, I have to say, with Bitcoin and Ethereum. First top here, going down. Second top, sideways action. And then breaking it. First top here, going down. Second top sideways action and then breaking it to the upside right looks pretty similar i have to say the only thing is that bitcoin did not go below this level which is one of the fibonacci levels right here on the fibonacci retracement tool but on ethereum we did and we hit it perfectly right here so pay attention to this i am going to keep you updated on my video so make sure to subscribe if you are not yet subscribed to this youtube channel finally traditional markets are actually yeah okay so we just had on the futures market one uh, decisive red candle here so that is also why Bitcoin is going down I'm telling you guys you need to pay attention to the traditional markets because yeah what we're seeing right now is actually not too bad so the traditional markets are actually at an all-time high we have this red candle but overall I mean the last four four hours ago we broke our previous all-time high here on the S&P 500 so that's absolutely fantastic did we break our previous all-time high on other markets as well? So on the Dow, we uh, closed at an all-time high as well. On the Nasdaq, man, what happened with the Nasdaq? What is this? Okay, so yesterday was a very good for good day for Nasdaq, up 2.61%. So all in all, I mean, for the stock market, things are looking pretty well, and Bitcoin is going sideways. This to me brings me more confidence that this is just a time consolidation, which I talked about at the beginning of this video. We need to have that time consolidation as long as the traditional markets are still pushing all time high after all time high, not having a significant crash. Bitcoin is going to, you know, just crush it. Bitcoin is going to outperform the stock market 100% if the stock market continues to be strong. So yeah, we're just having that time consolidation. Another thing we need to pay attention to is the, you know, you know the uh, balance on exchanges. We have been talking about this for a while as the balance on exchanges has been going down, price goes up. But what if you take a look at the inflow and outflows on the exchanges? Because when do we usually see the end of the bull market? Do we see it when we start to see the inflows start to ramp up? Well, according to on-chain data, this is not manipulated. This is raw data. There's no getting around this. Yes, that is the case. Look at this. This is the inflows and the outflows. So what this means is that it's the net inflow versus outflow. So if someone deposits, I don't know, 100 Bitcoin and someone withdraws 50 Bitcoin, you're going to have a net inflow of 50 Bitcoin. So during every day, what are the net inflows and outflows here? Well, you can see that when we have net outflows, meaning that people are taking the Bitcoin off exchanges in general, the price goes up, which is uh, what we have been uh, talking about on this channel as well. But check this out. Here, you have the inflows starting to get higher than the outflows. So you're getting a net inflow of, uh, of Bitcoin here. But the price still continues to go up. And then again, you have this outflow instead. And where we actually peak on Bitcoin is when you start to see massive amounts of inflows right here, right? And then you're seeing some outflows again. So Bitcoin starts to go up. 
until this point in which we start to see a lot of inflows into the exchanges, price starts to go down until you start to see the inflows stagnate and instead you're seeing massive amounts of outflow. <laughs> I mean, you get the idea, guys. Bottom line is, according to this data, you are not going to see a massive crash in Bitcoin until you see massive amounts of Bitcoin being transferred to the exchanges. So right here, you had massive inflow into the exchanges and that is where the market peaked. You can see the price of Bitcoin is this white line going down here. This was a massive crash. Same thing here, inflows, price goes down. Inflows, price goes down. And so you had this back and forth, but here you pretty much have, haven't seen a net inflow in one year. This whole year of 2020, You've just seen a net outflow during the course of this entire year. And this is also why Bitcoin has gone up so much. So until we see these spikes and these outflows start to dry up and instead you're getting massive amounts of inflow, according to this data, the bull run is not over. And I think that when you go to sleep today, you're just going to hear two words in your mind. Inflows, outflows. Inflows, outflows. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to also talk about President Biden freezing FinCEN's proposed crypto wallet regulation. So if you don't know what this was all about, it was about that they proposed some regulations saying that if exchanges wanted to operate and they wanted to withdraw customer funds, they need to verify that that wallet actually belongs to the customer, which is completely ludicrous. Because critics, they stated that it would be technically impossible for many projects to comply because smart contracts do not contain name or address information. So you have a uh, Treasury um, Secretary Mnuchin now being replaced by Yellen. And Jake Servinsky, he believes that this is actually very bullish because first, anyone is better than Secretary Mnuchin who decided long ago that he hated everything about crypto. Second, although Dr. Jelen may not be a fan now, I expect she'll be open to learning and listening and will follow regular order in deciding on new regulation. That's good. So Biden has also picked Gary Gensler, who is a crypto bull, as far as I know, to head the Securities and Exchange Commission, who appears to be more sympathetic to the mission of decentralization than his predecessor. So I think this guy was, uh, what was his name? Jay Clayton, I believe. And that's the guy who one day before he resigned came out and proposed some really ludicrous uh, proposal for Bitcoin. But he also announced that whole lawsuit with the SEC. And now let's take a look if uh, we can actually spot something here on Bitcoin. And now it's the make it or break it zone. I almost want to let this video run for a while to see if this is actually going to act as a uh, support or not well i am going to keep you updated on twitter guys make sure to follow me on twitter and make sure to watch the trading tutorial popping up at the end of popping up in the middle of this video right now i will see you right there